Hello and welcome to episode 43 of the QDR Crusaders for April 23rd, 2013. Welcome back guys, we've got our three-man show like we had last week, you guys seem to enjoy that, so we're going to be sticking with it. My name is Rainbow Plasma, I'm the organizer, editor, and uh, apparently doing the questions this week, again, and today I'm joined by... Burned01, the special guest coordinator and also the editor. I'm Thunderguy317, and I am the art organizer and editor. I'm not the editor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. I just derped it. Uh, <laughs> nice, pa uh, nice pattern forming there. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm the art organizer on the podcast. And yeah. we're just going to ignore the rest of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah. So, guys, this week, um, I have something special for you, specifically the people on the podcast, because I have a story that I want to tell. I've actually got two stories, but because we don't want to waste too much time, I'm only going to tell one of them. So you guys get to decide. Which story do you want to hear? Do you want to hear the fire alarm story or the corkboard story? I want to hear the corkboard story because you asked me what a corkboard was beforehand. I what, asked you before so you wouldn't say it on the show. Uh, <laughs> you jerk face. <laughs> burned, burned, what would you like to hear? Um, What's funnier? You, that that is not oh. a, an acceptable question. Pick one. I want to hear the funnier <laughs> one because corkboards, like what the hell's with corkboards? But like fire alarms, like eh, it's a fire alarm. Yeah. If you if you pick fire alarm, then I'll just flip a coin. Live risky. Let's go for the corkboard. Corkboard it. it is. All right. So last night I was lying in bed about one a.m. or so, going to sleep normal time. Um, and in my room I've got the bed on one side, and then across, um, like to the left of the bed on the other wall, I've got like posters and I've got a, a corkboard that I have like all this stuff I you know I hung myself on like the first day of university and and uh, I've got like all the all the <laughs> pins that you put in there you know and got schedules and stuff up on it and um, so I I was facing I was lying down facing that wall and I heard this like noise like this crack and you know I'm living in residence at a university so you expect to hear noises even like late into like 3 a.m. or whatever and it kind of sounded you know like old houses they would crack all the time no big deal sure but for some reason because you know I'm human I open my eyes obviously I was like whoa crack mm -hmm. and then just as I open my eyes I, I look across to the corkboard which is directly in front of me and it just like goes insane it just it just drops onto these cardboard boxes that were right underneath it, falls forward, and just spews stuff everywhere onto the floor. <laughs> like, all of the pins came out, the papers just went all over the floor. And the worst part, part about all of this was, uh, I had a box on top of the corkboard, like, just, like, held up there in between the wall and, and, the, and the board. And in that box was an open lid, um... And the box contained all of the pins that I didn't use, and it was a yeah. it was like a card sized box just overflowing oh, with geez. pins. And so as this falls, not only do the pins on the board go everywhere and the papers go everywhere, oh, no. but it, my floor is just covered in these pins. And I'm just sitting in bed, like lying up, and I'm just like, "What just happened?" <laughs> I look over at the at the wall. And I expect, because I have these things where you stick them onto the wall, you hold your arm up for like 10 minutes until you feel like you just want to fall over, and then it sticks there, and they've got hooks on them. Now, it didn't come off the wall. The hooks broke. Somehow, <laughs> with no force or effort, these hooks uh. just randomly broke, and so I had to spend the next like half an hour like picking up all these pins. I'm pretty sure there's still some on the floor. And then, of course, oh, after that, my adrenaline is going so much because it was just like a big noise and shocked me couldn't get to sleep for like the next hour so that is the cork board story and i thought it was pretty funny considering it just happened last night huh <laughs> so there i think uh your cleanup could have gone quicker if you had an electromagnet or something yeah when you, <laughs> you know when you first started your story i just pictured you like so there's this cork board and i keep it like right above my bed like right on the wall <laughs> oh, next no, to my no. bed and like i heard this crack and it just like wham and just like smack <laughs> against you while you're sleeping no no luckily it was, it was across the room but i just i don't get how the hooks could break how the plastic hooks could break with no, like, just like the no force on it. Uh, I just don't get it. Because they're not Maybe made in America. Maybe we had some sort of earthquake. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> things things deteriorate over time. Yeah, I guess. So, I guess. Could have been. Crappy plastic. Well, it lasted, you know, almost the entire school year, so. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good. All right. So, this week, uh, we have something kind of interesting. I actually have no idea what it is 
is really <laughs> but burnt uh decided to pick this out um because he found a couple of pieces and it's called crab battle crab battle Vern, do you want to talk about this? Because I, I'm confused. <laughs> so, um, I... Rage Racer. Seriously, <laughs> I, he's probably been waiting to do that like the whole episode. <laughs> I was so excited to make that uh... joke. Yeah. So, um, if I may explain this, because neither of you actually knew the origins of this, um, let's take a step back seven years now to E3, which is Electronics entertainment expo um in 2006 and this is when the playstation 3 was coming out and uh sony had this big news conference announcing the playstation 3 and some of the games that were coming out of it and it is generally known as one of the worst gaming press conferences of all time just like the way that they said stuff and, and the, the silly things that they had and and one of the jokes was ridge racer and and the guy said, look, it's Ridge Racer. And then nobody responded. So he went, Ridge Racer. And then nobody <laughs> responded still. But the other joke, the one that's tying into this episode, which is Crab Battle, um, is is crab this battle. game that they had. Um, I don't remember what the game was called. Um, but the way that they presented it was it, it was having real, you know, real actual battles, like wars from feudal like Japan. From Japanese right. history huh. and then and then immediately afterwards this giant crab comes like crashing down on, into the game <laughs> yeah and he like introduces it he's like as you can see by this giant yeah. crab boss <laughs> and then and then of course one of the most famous things hit it in its weak spot yeah for well, one, of the, one of the mo most famous things is um he flips it over and he goes and then you hit its weak point for massive damage <laughs> anyways <laughs> um apparently this has become like a pony meme i guess <laughs> somehow but, but only it, with rarity yeah it's turned into rarity battling giant crabs well anyway to tie into crab battle there's actually like a hilarious animated video with solid snake that i love where he's like in a cave and he comes across this crab he's like ah oh, my only like my greatest nemes nemesis nemesis is crab and he's like has this crab battle and starts trying to knife it and the crab like takes his knife and starts stabbing him <laughs> it, it's good it's good stuff that's where I get crab <laughs> battle from. So anyway, our theme this week's crab Yay! battle. Hey! So we're so gonna anyway, jump right into the um, art then. No, we were gonna talk about how this theme like oh, came we can to do be. That when we're looking at art, man. Well, why don't we pop up the first ah, okay, thing on the screen and then burn? Yeah. We can kind of explain how it came because it's relevant. Okay, so our first piece is called "Why" by Genji Lim. <laughs> why? That's why? A pretty, why? It's a pretty good why? question actually, because we're about to explain why we did this theme. Hey. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Go on. laughs> anyway okay so basically uh raymond plasma ended up sending me a link to this artist deviant art page and i was looking through his art and this was like the first piece that i came across was this uh piece in black and white and the best thing about it is it's a value study so like that was the first thing that caught me was it was just straight up a value study piece and it's just rarity fighting a crab so we were thinking about what we wanted to do for the theme for this week and i came across this piece and I really liked it and it was Rarity fighting a crab so I thought hmm like I wonder if I can find more pieces of just Rarity in a giant crab battle <laughs> and then I remembered that there was some other pieces that I really loved that we'll get to later in the show of like awesome artworks of Rarity fighting a giant crab <laughs> yeah so it's a it's apparently so a thing that is basically how this theme yeah today and was I more. mean you came up to me like a couple hours ago and you were like so what do you think of today's theme and I'm like what are you even talking about this makes no sense but then I crab battle <laughs> somehow these like five pieces that all have to do with just crab battle not only are they very original and very good pieces of art but they're also <laughs> from artists that we have barely or never featured before like almost all of them <laughs> yeah how yeah, right. this ever worked out i don't know but because <laughs> burned is burned. like magically a genius i don't know yeah. but hopefully this this week we'll be able to show you some new artists that you haven't seen really before because a lot of these are new that i've just started following now hooray yay you want so you so, said the artist's name, right? Yes. So yeah, Genji, Genji Lim. Genji Lim. This mm -hmm. artist is awesome. You should go check out his gallery. He's like, I, I was checking out his gallery and I was looking at his different pieces. And by far, my favorite pieces of his are his digital paintings. His digital paintings are awesome. 
like brushwork and then color on them and like some of the color on his more monochromatic pieces are just like it's super cool I, I can't even begin I mean they're not pony related but they're still really cool pieces of uh, pieces of art especially his value studies where he's just like his black and white pieces like this and he has some more um that are more like sci-fi themed they're really cool pieces and I was like I was looking at him and how he tran like transactions like from different levels of value from like pure black to like the highlight of white and all all the in-betweens um this guy is a pretty awesome artist i actually really enjoy his work i figured as you you'd can like see it. in this crab mm -hmm. battle <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of cool because if you look through like some of the other pictures in his gallery uh like you can see the the variance in value uh and i guess that's probably a good thing for any artist who's starting out like uh or who's trying to get better is you know try a couple valley studies um because i'm sure it helps with the uh yeah, black, making... just just try some black and whites, right? Yeah. Value. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh, we're going to cut man. you off the value. <laughs> yeah, no, no, seriously. But speaking directly to this piece, because if you want to see his other pieces, you're going to have to go to his gallery. Um, but speaking directly to this piece, uh, you know, it, it's really interesting to see, because I know you're also a, a big fan of messy brushwork. So, I, you yeah, know, this kind of combines yes. two things that you love. And, and I, I like it as well. It's, it's very nice. And, uh, you know, it's just, you know, the contrast between light and dark and, and i mean rarity herself is um is naturally white mm -hmm. but you know depending on how you use lighting you can infer different things and so people white is usually good dark is usually bad right so in this, most cultures yes yeah mm -hmm. the, this this giant crab is very dark <laughs> and it's Evil. menacing and it's and it's kind of covered in shadows and so you know you can immediately see that that's the enemy and then you've got rarity who is more light and she's got light coming down on her and she's also just naturally very light uh, so obviously she is kind of the the person in this battle who you're supposed to be identifying with and there's little subtle things like that that value can do which is really cool mm -hmm. like the hero yeah hero versus yeah. villain kind of thing and also just things from camera perspectives as well if you imagine this as a scene usually the camera is behind the hero or at least in a way that it's not behind you know it's usually facing the villain because you're supposed to be like you are the hero or at least you're relating to the hero especially mm -hmm. in like our kind of like video game culture where we're used to like playing the hero or the an antagonist like we really associate with someone who is like right in front of the camera or the camera's behind their soul sh uh, shoulder as we can associate them as kind of ourselves mm -hmm. or someone like uh who who is doing who, who basically we associate with i don't know i don't know how to word that but yeah, no, no, that yeah, makes no. total sense. Uh, um, oh, no, go ahead. Okay. I have points um, on Rainbow Plasma. Point. <laughs> well, go ahead then if it relates to Rainbow Plasma. Okay. Point. No, yeah, no, warping back into Rainbow Plasma's points where he's talking about the diff like the value shift between like uh, the brightness on rarity and then like the dark shadow crab. Um, a good a thing that value can not only do besides like kind of give association with good and evil, uh, light and dark, is it can actually create. Um, focus in the piece like we've always kind of mentioned that normally the brighter things will attract your eye and kind of cause focus so the brightest thing in this piece is rarity and like it it rarity really draws your eye because of how much bright she is so she's one of the first things that you kind of focus on in this piece and then you kind it kind of carries your eye up to this big like ominous crab kind of um uh towering over her almost um, like a reveal then, mm -hmm. yeah and how you're mentioning per perspective like uh it's it's a it's a pretty I want to say interesting dynamic perspective of how it's at an angle so it kind of creates movement or action and then uh, yeah. you have the crab kind of like again like standing over and kind of a gives it a larger feel than if it, they were just like standing next to each other normal it wouldn't give like a very uh, large like overpowering tone to it but kind of increasing the angle actually getting the, the villain in this piece or the the crab and kind of placing him perspectively and compositionally above rarity kind of gives him that more um evil presence so to speak mm -hmm. yeah uh <laughs> you kind of took my uh m my point that i was going to make with uh <laughs> <laughs> with uh motion what i th think is really cool is well first of all the uh like the way that the perspective of the piece is uh definitely gives it some motion and if you look at the ground uh what this artist did really interestingly um like with the bits of sand and dirt and stuff flying up uh it's like you know very m messy brushwork on the ground but you can definitely tell that there's motion there because 
uh, if you like look at the crab's legs, there's sand kicking up. And if you look at Rarity's hooves, there's sand kicking up. So It's funny how you see it as sand because I see it as water. Like it's huh. water splashing. Um, that makes sense and too. kind of how I used to justify that is if you look on the lower right hand side, you see those yeah. white highlights that hit. That's yeah. kind of like the highlights that hit water as if there was like a sun or something. Huh. And then the water splashing up right uh, on our left, our left hand side of rarity next to her bent hoof, where it has that really bright highlight on the top of what I think is water there, how yeah. it's really bright as if like kind of light were shining through it. Mm-hmm. It's funny because I just thought of dirty water. So I guess I'm in the middle of you two. <laughs> <laughs> We'll take I mean, it. <laughs> it is in grayscale, so it can only do so much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. One last point. I think Rarity might have broken her front leg, but I don't want to <laughs> dwell on it because that kind of creeps me out. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just bent. Yeah, I mean, no, it's yeah. just, it, you know, there's, I think there's just a little bit of an anatomy derp there. I think it's just like, you know, the knee yeah, would be higher than that, but, hmm. you know, whatever. But most of the time with, like, painted pieces like this, it becomes more about, like, the brushwork and the value and less about getting, like, the anatomy spot on, you know? Yeah, anatomy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, look at all the great artists, cartoon artists. They never take anatomy super seriously. So, you know, it's not a complaint. It was just a, <laughs> something I... It became noticeable to me. So, usually when anatomy becomes noticeable to me, then it's mm-hmm. something to comment on, you know? Yeah. yeah. You know, we're not all gushy. We can give tips as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? No, yeah, no, yeah. that's true. If you are um, interested in learning more about value stuff, uh, this is an artist to... On, an awesome artist to check out um mm-hmm. in fact like just like how he uses everything intelligently like the dark crab versus like the black background or actually the dark crab versus the like white behind it and then you have the dark background with uh like which which is odd because that black normally black kind of creates a void which it kind of does look a little voidish but um that black in the bottom left does create kind of like that foreground mm-hmm the black still creates a little bit of a void for me, but I think it, it's interesting in how he uses the deepest black to show, like, the foreground or the foremost area, and then he shows, like, white to show the farthest. Yeah. Or gray, rather. It's I don't know. It's, it's, like, interesting <laughs> to, like, kind of look at it and dissect it and how he separates objects and, mm-hmm. like, edges of cra- the crab or edges of rarity versus everything else. Yeah. It's All right. just something really cool and visually interesting. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to rope you in there, Burned, because we have to move on to our next piece. <laughs> crab battle. Ah. So our next piece is called Holy Crab! Exclamation point by Ryko Illust. Or, like, as an illustrator, I'm assuming. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's another crab battle piece. Yeah. More no. dynamic perspectives. Exactly. I was just yeah. about to say, the perspective on this piece, again, gives a lot of meaning to it. Um, obviously this crab is much larger than the last one looming over her in fact um, and it does something really interesting I, I know you'll want to talk about perspective more and, and things like that so I'll leave that to you but <laughs> I wanted to bring up the point that um, it uses shading on most of the crab's body a lot of artists are afraid to put their characters in the darkness because they're afraid that they'll do it wrong or they're afraid that it won't put enough emphasis on it or whatever this is a perfect example of, you know, using that kind of darkness and still being able to see what it is, you know. A lot of this character, you're seeing the underside of it. You're seeing the, you know, the bottom half, which which is obviously under the sun. It's not getting any sun to it. So I, I thought that was really interesting because not a lot of artists do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Raikou il- Illust. Il- il- illust. <laughs> Yeah, we'll I call him Raikou's <laughs> illustrations. It's easier to say. We'll just call him Raikou. Mm-hmm. But um, he really likes using kind of like the uh, dynamic lighting where it's like lighting in angles that you're not used to seeing like behind the characters or above the characters right. and he likes right. really mm-hmm. low lighting and messing with really like desaturated colors um, some of his like sleepy time pieces of different like ponies sleeping are actually really well done for like very very low very um, low lighting and very low color pieces and I used to kind of look at them when we were first starting the show uh, I kind of wanted to like bring them in and talk about them Maybe we'll get to them in a theme, but again, another really cool artist where he like goes and tries out new things and uh, tries unusual lighting or perspectives or whatever, um, and just has like cool pieces to look at, uh, even for your own art, for your own learning stuff. Uh, <laughs> but perspectives, crab battle. Um, <clears throat> no, no, what I was saying, it's it having something at a unique angle or like again towering over can cause that more 
dynamic, I'm a huge crab feel. Again, because if it was just like straight on looking, um, it may not feel as giant, as ominous as it does at this specific angle um, where you're like physically underneath the crab and you can see like the light come over the edge of the crab and like the claw in proportion to rarity is like twice her size. Um, and then like as everything gets farther away, you can see like it getting a little bit more desaturated as if it actually has like atmospheric perspective in front of the legs giving it that huge vast look and then the clouds again help with that so there's like just a bunch of little subtle things that help make this crab look super vast and i mean again it's not like a super highly detailed painting um all the paintbrush like paint brushwork in it is relatively simple it's like super loose um and there's not like a high amount of uh, like brushing in it and um it's very like unhidden and it was just you can tell it was done like really quickly but it still makes like a really cool piece Mm -hmm. yeah i I like the messy art stroke style in this piece uh you can especially see it like in the the crab's claw and legs and stuff like that Mm, Um, highlights yeah because it's like uh you you know it doesn't have to be detailed it's because that's that's the style that the artist chose and it Mm -hmm. yeah it looks cool (laughs) <laughs> I think it's important to okay. We keep saying it doesn't have to be detailed. If you want to make the best piece of art you possibly can, you're going to have to make use detail. But the fact of the matter is, it's not always the best strategy to try and make the very best you can make every single time, you know? There's mm-hmm. experimenting with different techniques, there's using a bunch of different things here. But I I would just caution to say you know, you know, it's not necessary, but if you look at a lot of artists who do this kind of stuff, they have other pieces in which they, you know, spend a lot more time, do a huge amount more detail. And, and I'm not saying it's all the time, but most of the time that kind of comes out better. So I just wanted to give that kind of other perspective. Oh, yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, <laughs> I kind of want to disagree with you a little bit, but for the most part, yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, but if you look at someone like, like Husi, who does... A lot of like this the messy brush strokes and stuff like that it's more about portraying the emotion of the piece than getting the exact details down so I, I, yeah <laughs> artistic conversations fun <laughs> yeah i know i was just um, thinking, i was thinking more along the lines of you know uh, say an artist like a trill you know you, you, yeah. look, you look at the art pieces that he makes and you're like well those are those are great and those are fine but then there's one that comes along that he puts in you know like that extra emphasis into and that extra time and detail, and you can tell the difference. You know, yeah. it has different impact, but I guess just from at least a technical standpoint, it's quote unquote better. You know, it's, yeah, it's hard to I, use the word better, but I think you guys know what I mean. Yeah, no, I yeah. I definitely agree. I think in my um, opinion, it depends on like your purpose and what you're trying to accomplish with it, and then it also ties into style. Um, like with a trill. He has his like cute pieces that he does for fun or like his 30 minute sketches. But when he does his really like really nice, fantastic pieces, they're usually almost always commissions. And he takes a very long time um, doing them because he really cares about doing his commissions. And he really cares about Mm -hmm. giving that person who's actually paid money for his work, like what they paid for. Um, But it's like it it also ties a little bit into style because you can have like a really expressionist artist who's like way more about the brush strokes and the colors just do a really like loose crazy piece and it can still be really good um or you can have an artist who puts in a lot uh like an extreme amount of emphasis in reality like uh, someone like Zyamo 5 where mm-hmm. like all of his time is put into like the small finer details and making everything look like as realistic as possible um but again, like it's that that realism in detail is like really notable because that's it's very time consuming. It's very difficult and takes a lot of skill. So I wouldn't necessarily use the word like one thing's better than the other, but it's all like it's a it's a matter of opinion and it's a matter of taste. And I mean, like all all art is subjective. So that's kind of how you have to look at it. But I mean, a quick like crab battle like this probably <laughs> maybe took an hour or so. But something like a work by Zymo 5 where he puts every little detail into the army, Ar- armor could have taken like two weeks. Like, who knows? Yeah, I, so, think, I, mean, I think maybe I'm just speaking from the perspective of this piece uh, as an individual piece. I, I think that, you know, uh, the kind of it's an interesting thing to do, but it doesn't necessarily add anything to this piece past the point of I was doing it, you know, as a quick little fun thing. Yeah. 
Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. you can tell that because it's very transparent that even I can notice that like it's done very quickly. And that's mm-hmm. nothing to say about like, oh, is it's a beautiful piece or whatever. It's, you can just like, if, if it's visual, if you can tell visually that it was done quicker, then I mean, that obviously comes out in the art. Yeah, I just wanted mm-hmm. to, you know, we've got a lot of young artists who are, who are trying to learn. So, you know, I don't always want to say, you know, keep doing it messy, keep doing it. You know, there is some value to detail <laughs> and there's some, there's some, you know, quantity to definitely uh, yeah. Yeah. more time spent into it. Yeah, there's professionalism like comes with that too. Yeah, it, it, mm-hmm. it's there's a wide variety. You should experiment with all of it. Yeah, and if you're if you have a, like a messy style, you you should try you know doing a more detailed piece or vice versa just to see exactly how it is. Yeah. All right, so our next piece is called "Rarity <laughs> Fighting a Giant Crab" by subject number two three nine four. I love the title. <laughs> uh, I also love the crab in this piece. Who is the artist again? Subject number 2394. Okay. I think we... Have we featured something by them? Uh, yeah, the I name's familiar. I don't think so. Did he send in uh, fan art? <laughs> oh, I know how when we mentioned them, he did the unsung um, uh, cover of the, one of the fanfics that you like reading oh, with yeah. Lyra. Uh, yeah, 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 from, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's right. Uh, something. <laughs> don't even remember Background <laughs> Pony. That's what it was. Yeah, Background Pony. Yeah. 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 Crab Battle. Yeah. <laughs> the, the part that I love about this piece is that, you know, in the other pieces and in the future pieces, we see rarity with various weapons and things like that. You know, sword and shield is pretty common. In this one, the crab is a sword and shield. <laughs> it's yeah, just, they both have swords and shields. It's just like, yeah. oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Actual crab battle. Look at how big the sword is and i just imagine them bye. having this weird parrying <laughs> i just picture like the the crowd just like by the power of crab skull <laughs> yeah Ma- imagine anyway. the the forge that would have had to like make the crab that. forges yeah <laughs> deep under the ocean with the lava and the crab armor this yeah. was my grandfather's crab sword <laughs> i shall strike you down pony crab battle um perspective <laughs> stuff Yes. Uh, this, it, it, Once again, it is hugely into perspective in this one. Not quite as emphasized as the last ones. Yeah, so the mm-hmm. first two pieces that um, we showed had a bit more kind of dynamic, unusual, and a little bit more unique perspective where it was like things were like looming or at angles. Or this one's, it's very straightforward um, and it's more, has a larger emphasis on the vertical composition of it. It's meant to be more of a vertical piece and that's kind of how it shows the tallness of the crab is... Like, vertically speaking, cra- the crab takes up, like, four-fifths of the entire piece, and then Rarity is, like, actually drawn very small. And the other piece is, like, Rarity isn't drawn as a very small figure. She actually takes up a lot of space in the composition of the piece, but she feels small because of how the crab is drawn. Mm-hmm. In this one, the perspective isn't as dynamic as the others because, like, the crab physically takes up a whole bunch more room in the piece itself, and then it's vertically, like, space, like, straight up and down. So it's not as unique or dynamic, but it still gets the point that this is a freaking huge crab. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, crab battle. <laughs> I like the way that the water's done in this piece. I don't know why, but it just, it reminds me of like, uh, I don't even know. <laughs> kind of gives an epicness feel to the crab with like the light yeah. shining underneath it and then kind of like the shadow uh, when it hits the beach of the giant crab. Yeah, <laughs> we're featuring I think, giant I, crabs. I think it's that whole like um, viewing the horizon over the the ocean. It kind of yeah. gives it like a broader span of I don't even know what I'm saying, <laughs> but like you Stuff. know, it's it's a big at- atmosphere. It's not even oh. atmospheric perspective though. It's like it gives a lot yeah. of depth, right? Because you look at yeah. that and you go, oh, beach, ocean. So then you think of ocean. Ocean is quite you know deep and and long. I well, guess. Not only this. <laughs> not only life. that. But how about this? So if the water was just blue, like a basic blue, Mm -hmm. there would be really nothing telling you that that is a vast expanse of space. Oh, there's a vanishing point. There would be nothing telling you that there's stuff going back (laughs) that way. So giving that sunshine and have those orthogonal directions. Mm -hmm. Uh, I swear to God, you bring up linear algebra, I will kill you. (laughs) (laughs) It's orthogonal lines was just something simple I learned in art appreciation. It just means those lines that go towards the vanishing point. So the yellow color there... um, creates kind of that orthogonal line that goes and vanishes into into the sunset giving that 
spans of ocean a bit of vastness and you know like and makes the crab seem a little bit bigger if it were just flat but um that light helps it seem not so flat hmm yeah that's cool art stuff nice yeah crab battle I think <laughs> every single I, I think... time there's a silence. <laughs> oh my goodness! I don't have much to say about this piece, to be honest. It's nice. I, I really like it. Yeah, but... yeah. I think it's a different species of crab. Yeah, it is. Yeah, definitely. From the other two. Yeah. Hold on. Now I have to look. So the first one was like the crab had like the eyes oh, like in, like sunk into it. Yeah, and like had and kind of like the side crab claws ones. Like... And then the next one was like a flat crab yeah. with like the arms underneath it. And then this one is like, well, like it looks almost like king crab with short short legs, but yeah. king crabs have huge, really long legs. Yeah, but, but they're the, different the... kinds of crab. That means rarity has defeated a plethora of crabs. <laughs> like, how many crabs has rarity taken on? Wait, and what's the word for multiple in crabs? the pony world? Crab word eye? for group of crabs. A scuttle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what we both thought. A scuttle. It's a scuttle of crabs. Amazing. <laughs> a butt ton. <laughs> um, no. Okay. Yeah. So, moving on to the next piece. I thought you were right. actually Googling it. I was all waiting. No, I did, <laughs> but then you said scuttle, and that works so well, and it actually, I, I now take did that you as my stop, definition. Did you stop Googling? <laughs> Fine. I'm going to, hold on. Oh, the scuttle of, of crabs. So, the next piece is called Picture Unrelated <laughs> by Fox in Shadow. Feel free to keep Googling, but I'm going to move on. <laughs> so, Picture Unrelated is... Um, I believe this is watercolor. I'm not. A little bit of both. Uh, I'm not. Hmm. It's both. Okay. So yeah. So uh-huh. it's. It, all right. The description says uh, Copic markers and watercolors. Yay! Traditional art. Yeah. It's called the that cast, on the show. cast of crabs. A cast by the way, that's lame. I know it's it scuttle. is. A cast. So it's a scuttle. Yeah. Hmm. I like scuttle better. Yeah. Yeah. Scuttle cast. Mm-hmm. Scuttle cast. <laughs> so as you can see anyway. in this scuttle, well, actually, this piece starts a trend that, that happens slowly over the next couple of pieces, but it mm-hmm. becomes slowly a little bit more violent and violent. <laughs> so, for example, yeah. in this one, she's kicking and blasting the crab literally to death. Yeah. Okay, we should so have, we I want to have... make you make this actual montage of crab battles. Oh, for the love. So <laughs> in our first piece, like it's just it's just rarity and it's just her. And then the next piece, Rarity has a sword. And the piece after that, uh, the crab has a sword, has a sword and shield. And then Rarity has a shield. And in this one, she's like actually kicking and like piecing the crab apart. <laughs> it's, uh, what, it's awesome. What kind of montage would that be? I'm just going to set these musical pieces to Eye of the Tiger and then say, call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Oh, God. Oh, anyway, um, traditional art. So our first two were our first two pieces that we featured were a bit more painted with like the actual value study in black and white. And then there was like actual color and it brought some color into it. And then there was the fully colored piece. But the fully colored piece, our last one before this was still uh, is much more drawn with like uh, very clean line art than the first two. Because the first two were actually like physically painted or the first one was like straight up painted, no lines. The second one had some lines, but then it painted in color. And then the third one was like all just like really exact lines line art and exact coloring and shading and this one's like traditional drawn with like actual pens and it's all about the line art and then it shows a little bit of color in watercolor so it's kind of cool to see those um artistic styles kind of like develop and kind of like blend into each other go from like straight painting to almost straight drawing with just some watercolor thrown on the crab very good water watercolor mind you um i really like fox fox and shadows style when it comes to drawing ponies or uh even like backgrounds uh but uh again perspectives this one doesn't really have like super dynamic perspectives but it has dynamic poses and movement with like rarity kicking the junk out of a crab (laughs) (laughs) and like blasting his cloth with their magical magic crab smiting laser yeah that's the thing (laughs) it's really interesting to see watercolors because um like it's it's kind of neat to see what the artist chose to bleed I guess that's the right term for it, but yeah. like, uh, y- you know, surrounding the crab is is this kind of brown color that's been bled out into the the sheet of paper, mm. but everything else is you know fairly within lines. Mm. Um, it's kind of cool. I does that. It must it must be difficult to like kind of keep the watercolor that he's doing outside of the lines of the crab. 
Yeah. I've never actually done watercolor. It would be fun. Well, see, <laughs> the thing is, uh, if I'm correct, and I might be completely wrong here, but if I'm correct, the most of the marker was done on rarity, and most of the watercolor was done for the crab. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that would make sense. So you can see well, how rarity is very much, you know, within the lines, prim and proper, the purple there, you know, is yeah. definitely in her hair, whereas the crab is just like, bleh. It's almost like it gives it this, like, <laughs> dirty environment look, yeah. um, which wor- works really well in the scene because, you know, it's Filthy focused. evil crabs. Exactly. It's, like, focused around mm-hmm. this dirty crab. And, of course, rarity could not deal with that. I mean, come on now. No, the feels, crab's not crab's not fabulous enough. Feels sort sort of bad for the crab because he doesn't have like an evil look like in his eye or something. Like his little eye poking up is seems so innocent. I don't know. He's, he's, he, he's <laughs> crab. He looks like he's kind of coming at Rarity with like the claws. So I think it's yeah, in self true. defense though. Either that or she's like, oh, crab," and he's like, "No, stop! Don't hurt me!" And she's like, <laughs> <laughs> "I wonder if crabs can talk in Equestria." Uh, they probably uh, can. I wonder if they're giant. Season four Equestria. spoilers right here. <laughs> if there's crabs in season four, you will all have to pay me five dollars. I'm calling it right now. <laughs> but so our next piece, because we, we unfortunately are running low on time, our next piece is called "Rarity Fighting a Giant Crab." Again, a great title. Violence. I, I don't know how to pronounce Sorry. it. Go ahead. Jaya. 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 So How about I, Jai? No. <laughs> sure. <Yeah. laughs> Crab battle? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Crab yeah, anyway. battle! <laughs> battle! So uh, we were talking more about it uh, getting violent, and now Rarity has um, evolved from crab smiting lasers to swords to now the crab destroying bazooka. The, it's, as it's you can clearly see. The RPG, rather. RPG. CRPG. Or crab. it's the crab rocket propelled grenade. Of course. Nice. Wouldn't it be C D RPG? Or actually crab it would be C O R P G would be crab obliterating rocket propelled grenade. <laughs> anyway. Corp- <laughs> Corp- <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this this is an awesome piece again. More fully painted, uh very much uh more cleaner style than uh Re- Riku's piece. Um, and you can actually, and you can actually like see a full roundness and shading to the characters. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the painting style is much less um, transparent than in uh, the first piece by Genji Lim. And it's a pretty cool piece. And it's got again that that dynamic perspective. But now it's swapped to the opposite of our first two pieces, where it's from like top looking down to where the crab still looks epic and vast because of the angle but rarity is still actually much larger than in our third piece we featured Mm -hmm. um, and takes up a lot of the composition and she has her crab destroying face on with her (laughs) kapka and that crab is definitely more menacing i love the expressions yeah the eyes yeah Mm -hmm. they give a lot of they (laughs) give a lot of emotion just through the eyes of the crab and also just through the face of rarity which is which is pretty cool they're both just looking at each other so angrily. Mm-hmm. This piece has much more emotion that was really lacking in our first four pieces. Like, mm-hmm. like there it, there was some cool dynamic like fighting going on in Fox and Shadow's piece, and some awesome stuff going on in the other ones. But there really wasn't that like that sense of emotion, that sense of like just pure like what do you, what do you want to call that tension between yeah. like rarity and the giant crab to where mm-hmm. this one like you can physically see it in both of their eyes and. The crab's beady little black <laughs> crab eyes. <laughs> also, uh, it's set in Final Destination from Super Smash Bros. So, I mean, all uh, I have to say to that is no items, crab only, Final Destination. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's Front one battle. item. The, the, the C-O-R-P-G. No, the she just comes with that as a character. Oh, uh, right, right, right. yeah. uh, okay. That's her default you know, weapon. Standard rarity stuff. I mean, come on. Have you even watched the show at all? Like, goodness. <laughs> goodness. People I work with. God. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh crab battle <laughs> i do i love the perspective on the claws in this one actually especially the claw like right behind rarity because it's like, just like coming at he's her he's like reaching for her. yeah we'll destroy you <laughs> i do actually i do actually like this one um because you know burned you like a really messy medium and i do too in certain uh when it's the mm-hmm. focus of a piece but Otherwise, I like to see these kind of clean, you know, detailed, you know, mm-hmm. uh, kind of pieces, um, which mm-hmm. this definitely is. You know, there's no mm-hmm. strokes out of line. There, you know, some of it's 
like slightly messy in the shading but even that you know a lot of it is very smooth and and very thought out um which i really like Yeah, no, I've definitely become more favorable of kind of the messier pieces. Mm -hmm. And this one, like, uh, when I saw it, I was like, I almost dismissed it because it wasn't like super messy artsy. But then I was like, this uh, piece is like really amazing. Well, like when when I came across it, I actually I could like tell like this piece is awesome. Um, <laughs> but I had like as of recent, I've just been really enjoying like messy pieces and like painty stuff. Because you're a hipster. You're a hipster. <laughs> No, burned. I don't think there's any question there. <laughs> <laughs> that was my that was my only default default response. <laughs> burned says as sure. he puts on a uh, uh, fedora and uh, yeah. You do have a fedora, <laughs> don't <glasses>. you? <laughs> <laughs> no response. All right. Well, I'm gonna take that <laughs> as on. my answer. <laughs> I'd, yeah. Okay. Next sure. piece. Uh, you got that. You got, all right. You got so our next there. piece and final piece is called Rarity versus Giant Crab Commission. Before I put it, sorry, sorry. Dewey. Before I put this up on the screen. Just wanted to, you know, say this out there. This has got blood in it. So there's going to be a small, very small amount of blood. Unfortunately for our viewers, crab battles are unfortunately very violent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So If you've ever fought a crab, you would know. It's kill or be killed in the world of rarity and crabs. Exactly. <laughs> so we just wanted to warn you, the violence was implied before, or at least not very gory. This has got a small so, amount of blood. So without further ado, crab battle! Crab battle. <laughs> yeah, you guys uh, so much. <laughs> uh, first thing about this piece, I love the colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, colors are amazing. Mm -hmm. This was the piece I was talking about earlier when I was like, I had known of an awesome crab battle piece that I saw like way back when, and um, like what is it? Was this only made in the beginning of this year? Wow, that is a, yeah. not a long time at all. <laughs> um, but I, I remember when this piece uh, first came out, and I remember favoriting it, and I remember thinking it was awesome because of all the colors. And the colors actually really mess with me because when I first looked at this piece, I saw Rarity and all the blue, and then I'm like, what the heck is she doing? And yeah. I didn't understand what was mm -hmm. going on. And then I slowly started like discovering everything in this little world of crab battle that's going on. <laughs> or she's like actually standing on this huge crab and like stabbing it in the eye with pins because mm -hmm. she's rarity and that's her weapon of choice is sewing yeah. materials. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I also and love how. Sorry, go on. No, yeah, I was gonna say I was probably gonna just gonna state your point, so you go. Oh well, I was just gonna say I love how this piece has a motive for the battle. Yeah, because the crab stealing the gems. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the giant gem. Give me the gem, crab, because the crab <laughs> is obviously the protector of this magical gem. Everybody knows yeah, that, right? Rarity's I mean, like, give me that gem. Is that isn't that like standard knowledge? Giant crabs guard large gems. Yeah, I think, but I think it's more crustaceans, sure. like like any kind crustaceans of... in general. Yeah, yeah. But rarity just happens to be a crab hunter, so it works out. We, we, need, we need we need rarity versus mm. lobster. Scootaloo <laughs> so, <laughs> versus lobster. Lobster battle. Scootaloo lobster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, the color the colors are definitely a big part of this piece, and it's funny because. If you think of it from an RGB perspective, these are actually complementary colors. You know, the the, the cyan and the reds actually are mm. complementary. I don't, I do not care if you say "ant" eh, to that burned. It's a fact. It's a fact. It is absolutely a fact that cyan and red are complementary colors in an RGB color wheel. No, I completely agree. I wasn't about to. I wasn't bleh. stating an opinion. It was okay. a fact. No, I didn't say it was an opinion. I I am now fully aware of that. I have seen the RGB color wheel and I have looked at it and I have even mentioned on the show before how I think it's really cool that red and blue or red and cyan are actually like opposites. Because when you go into Photoshop and you hit control I, you hit that invert button, it swaps a red and blue piece to a blue and red piece and it's super cool. Mm -hmm. Yay! So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You had a point there, but I definitely Burn knew battle. I, I stopped you that. I stopped you there. What, what was it? No, my point was going to be like the cyan in this piece is actually really cool because I find that the blue and the cyan is like really what hits me first since what stands out the most and it kind of carries my eye upwards into that bottom corner and it actually looks to me kind of like it, it pops out or like comes forward from the piece and then the red of the crab actually recedes. Like when I look, like when I look at it or if I take myself kind of farther away from my monitor and kind of just look at the piece as a whole... The crab kind of really like recedes and then that blue in the background just really pops out. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's rather cool. I like when colors kind of 
take interesting attributes or do different things to a piece. And this piece is extremely unique in how all the colors are interacting and everything's made. And like the outlines to just the crab, like uh, where the artist uses like blue outlines on the claws. And everything is just made in a, a unique way, in a unique way that really gives a, kind of a special feeling to this artist's style and develops a really cool style and feeling to the whole piece that again like I haven't seen before in any other kind of artwork that is along these lines with like the pink 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 and red characters like outlined in blue so outlined in the RGB complements and things like that and it creates a really unique piece that is makes a very awesome crab battle huh. <laughs> so I don't know so like this is one of my favorite pieces I've had this in my favorites for quite a while because like Rarity's expression is awesome she's painted awesome and then the crab is shown super dynamically and awesome in a way that artists normally wouldn't show something. And it's also depicted in a way that none of the pieces before this have shown. Because in all the other pieces, it's been very distinct. It's been full crab, rarity, and then it's oh, it's been like behind rarity or, or, so, or something of the matter of that where like you see the whole crab and you see the whole subject to where this piece like the crab not only is the subject of the crab battle, but it's also the environment and it takes up the full composition of the piece, and it creates an entirely different feel that's super cool. And then the colors are, like, way far like out there in any kind of piece that I've seen, that I have seen, that create a really cool feeling. Yeah. I think the and setting like, of this piece is also really cool, because it's, like, in water. Well, yeah. the, the crab's in water. I don't know if, like, behind it is also supposed to be water, like, the background, or if it's supposed to be that's, sky. That's why it's but, unique. I yeah. think it could be, like, it could... You can set up to your imagination. It could be sky. It could just be magical light in this magical crab area that she is trying to secure this gem from. <laughs> All it, crabs live in caves. Whatever Come on, you know that. <laughs> but it's it's still pretty artistically, even if we don't know the magical thing that exists behind the crab. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. And uh, I think other than that, that's basically it for the art crab this battle. week. Crab battle. <sighs> That went from not funny to funny to not funny to funny to not funny again. <laughs> All in the span of about 50 minutes. <laughs> so we've got some questions this week. Um, I know you guys enjoyed last week's kind of rapid fire. Um, we got four questions this week. Not really going to be rapid fire, but we're going to try to go through them as quickly as possible because we are running a little bit short on time. So um, without further ado, the first question is from Metabobo. And it says, okay, can you move the cursor? Because you just blocked the question there. With the, okay. Oh, yeah, here. Let me just go like that. <laughs> if you could have one superpower, a superpower to steal superpowers is off limits, which would you choose? So why don't we make an order this week? Because we all got confused last week. So why don't we go Flutter Guy burned me. Sound good? Okay, but I don't know. <laughs> um, I guess if I had one superpower, it would be to control time or to slow time down. Because I, I always find that I don't have enough time to do things. Cool. So, yeah. Burned? Hmm. It's very thoughtful. Um, if I could have a superpower, it would be to slay crabs so I could crab battle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it would probably be like teleportation because that'd be super sick because then i could be like super fighting ninja guy be like Pff, i don't know and like the teleport movies that i've always seen are always super cool um invisibility whoa whoa would be whoa cool, one but superpower like, there buddy <laughs> i'm thinking i so that's the what's the one i'm gonna go with is teleportation i'm just considering my options but i do want to point out that the superpower to steal superpowers would be a worthless superpower because in our world superpowers don't exist so that it has to only can be a superpower in a world of superpowers, God, which I guess thinking. makes, again, this question. All right, enough, enough, enough. No, because see, like, if, th uh, well, since there's only three of us, if two of us chose an actual superpower and then one of us chose a superpower to steal powers, then they could steal our other then powers. Then that one uh, person would be the biggest sense. jerk on the entire planet. Uh, because they had the option to just give themselves a superpower anyways. <laughs> uh, Look, you. okay, enough. Okay, cool. The teleporting, that's awesome. I personally would fly. I would get wings or maybe without wings. Wings would be better, but I would fly. And I know for a fact that that's also Pinky Dash's uh, answer. Mm -hmm. Flying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my second close. Mm -hmm. But it's yeah. like, why can do I need to fly when I can just be like, boop. <laughs> flying is awesome. Burned, you're here. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> that and I'm extremely lazy. So it'd be like, I'm thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
So the second question is from an anonymous. Apparently, he left his real name, um, which we're not going to say on the show. So if you want us Anon. to, if, if you if you want us to um, say your name on the show, then don't leave your real name. Leave an internet name or something. We want to protect identities, um, and you know, just in general. I don't know. It's a bit weird mm -hmm. um, to say real not names. Not that we don't support Facebook stalking. Consider we like <laughs> yeah, all like our own page. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyways, this comes from anonymous, and it says, "What is your favorite prime number besides the number three? What? <laughs> My favorite prime number and favorite number is thirteen. Okay, cool. Uh -huh. That's an evil number because it's... I know that because Innistrad was an evil themed werewolf vampire block in Magic." It, it's a oh, it's, oh it's, this is relating back to magic, is it? <laughs> yeah, they had a whole bunch of cards with like power damage thirteen or something. Because mm. thirteen's like the unlucky number, like Friday the Thirteenth. Uh, it's um, misunderstood. That's why I like numbers. It. Uh, what's a okay? I think that's what a prime. I don't. I don't know what a prime number is because I hate math and I don't pay attention. You don't know um, what a prime number is. It's, is it's... twenty one a prime number? No. Damn it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know every prime number off the top of my so head. So, Burns' favorite prime number is is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds... Zero prime number? Uh, no. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> just just say two. Number. Two is a prime number. Just say two. Yeah, say two. All right, so sure. Burns' answer is two. <laughs> but I got answer is 13. I would have said 13, but first of all, it's already taken because that's also mm -hmm. my favorite number. But I did want to bring something up, and I wanted to say uh, 1,993 because that is the year that I was born, and it also happens to be a prime number. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually that's researched cool. this before the podcast. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. Yay. All right, paid numbers. <laughs> numbers suck. <laughs> so our third question comes from a late customer um, who we've who's done fan art of us and we've talked about him a little bit. Um, yeah, we love you. And um, his late customer is awesome. His question is, commission. Burns already talked about his OC's design, but I don't think I've heard the rest amazing. of you talk about your own. So how did you guys come up with your OC's designs and names? Speaking of my OC's design, you should see my commission that late customer did for me. Cause it's amazing. Or we yeah, can late just customer is awesome. No, that's my part of the question because technically Pimping. this question is. Oh. Like, <laughs> or you found me. Right, your guys' turn. Okay, so uh, it's kind of an interesting story because I had to come up with an OC because we were starting the podcasts, um, and I knew I wanted it to be something vector related. So I actually started with the cutie mark, which is not really the way that no people normally go about creating OCs. <laughs> Unique. Yeah. <laughs> so I created the cutie mark and then, uh, I don't know, I was playing around with color wheels and kind of came up with the, the colors and uh, proportions and stuff like that. And uh, for the name, I actually, Caramel didn't have a name for the longest time, uh, but someone suggested Caramel Curve. and uh, Plus you wanted your OC to be delicious, right? So Caramel works perfectly. Mm -hmm. Yes. I yeah. can confirm that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's my story. I think, how did you develop the hair? Weren't you, like, playing with it in, uh, like, Inkscape and try to, like, craft it your own, like, in your yeah, own way? Yeah, actually... Um, you, like, made it from scratch. I remember you were having a hard time with it. Yeah, I was making it from scratch, and it was not coming out well. And uh, a gentleman by the name of Sir Surtex, I think, yeah. was... had him on uh, the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um he he offered some tips and stuff and i, I oh it was just kind of playing around with like inner lines for the hair and stuff and uh mm -hmm. it was like that was when i really like first started noticing like different artistic things like uh in terms of what you can do with hair design um and making it look like 3d with the way that the lines are kind of curved and stuff mm -hmm. so did you see the way that i made your hair in that birthday present that i made for you i did yes i kind of like your hair like that you should change your hairstyle to the way <laughs> <laughs> you should change your hairstyle to the one that i did for you uh, maybe caramel will get a haircut how awesome i am <laughs> i hate you she'll get a haircut kidding. and everything she's you joking. stand for or just joking or maybe she'll get a manicure Ma manicure, uh, manicure? Uh -huh. oh my god i'm gonna be <laughs> violently hairs, i'm gonna be violently hairs sick. cartilage <laughs> that pun was so bad but Okay. It's technically cartilage, so it's like a nerd joke. Oh my god. Burnt, do you want to talk about your OC, or does the late customer picture suffice? Um, 
I'm pretty much like I could force everyone to go back and watch all the episodes we had. <laughs> yeah, he because <laughs> I've talked about it. how it relates to egophiliac. I've talked about how I like bat ponies, but I don't like bat wings. I've talked about I have a fuzzy chin. I guess I'll just recap. Um, I have a goatee. That's why I have a goatee because it's a pony sona. Um, and I like fuzzy ears because bat ponies. And yep, that's about it. Cool. And then my commit or li- the commit commission Lake Customer did for me is freaking adorable. And that's <laughs> the only piece I have of like me actually recording the show, kind of like relate to back. Uh, all right. Cool. Well mm-hmm. then. Yeah, me, me. Yeah, I know. I'm just me. gonna cut you. Like you said, we <laughs> yeah, actually talked about it before. So you know, go back yeah. watch the old episodes. Yay. Um, <laughs> personally, uh, I created my OC. Uh, I had a, another OC, which is supposed to be like a pony sona, but I thought they were really lame. Um, and I was like not really motivated to actually use it. So I thought as a cr- kind of creative outlet about a year ago, I just went into like Pony Creator and started messing around with colors and stuff. And um, I made like maybe five or six characters that I thought were, you know, just like different and maybe a little bit more unique than what would come out of normal Pony pony, uh, pony Creator. Um, and not like unique in the way that's like, oh God, but like unique in the way that actually looks good. Um, and one of the ones that came out really caught my eye, and that's the OC that I ended up using, Bright Ember. Um, and just from there, you know, uh, I, I saw it and I went, this is a really awesome design and I'm going to stick with it. Um, mm. Made a backstory to it, made a cutie mark, tried to make it a little bit different than people normally do. Because what I found over the uh, last year or so is that a lot of people like the color scheme that I have. And a lot of people mm. like the, um, <laughs> they really Speaking like of a the, lot of people. Can we feature, especially like right now, put on the screen the shot of you that we came across? That it's like <laughs> it looked exactly like you and your OC, <laughs> yes. like well, relaxing on about, a couch. Let's, let's talk about this for a second because we're I, gonna. I forget what anyone said, or I don't care what anyone says. That is you. Okay. <laughs> so I think three or four weeks ago, I don't remember how this came up, but somebody mentioned <laughs> this. Somebody like showed this picture. That was me. And and the creepy thing about this is that this picture, like. You guys have seen how I look. I'm blonde, kind of <laughs> yeah. shaggy hair. Um, mm-hmm. That picture looks like me and my OC. If my OC was a it Pegasus, is so done. <laughs> and it was it's like awesome. It was so creepy. This is supposed to be Spitfire. This this is uh, something by Spitfire Art, um, and it was a commission done. And so obviously that's Spitfire. But it's just kind of eerie how it was all done and it looked you... so. Yeah, it's so close. You just got done saying how your superpower would be flying and then see like this is like peering into your soul. This is like the real you and your real pony sona. <laughs> well, yeah, my my the only reason why my pony sona isn't a um Pegasus is because um Bright Ember originally started out as a variation off of Rainbow Dash. Like it was heavily variated, but it started out very at the beginning, and so I went, well, it can't be a Pegasus or else that's just, you know, not original at all. <laughs> yeah. So it's a unicorn. But if it's if adorable. I was gonna have a pony Zona, it would definitely be a Pegasus. Do it the flying. It's adorable. <laughs> yeah, so that was it was kind of creepy. Anyways, you know, it, I just made those OCs, got to mine, and um, <laughs> you know, just decided that I would take it. And when the show started, it was just an OC. It wasn't supposed to be anything associated with me. It was just mm-hmm. an OC. And when the show started, we just used OCs as the symbol for them. So it's kind of become a symbol of me now. Mm-hmm. You're adorable. Thank you. <laughs> I love this piece. I'm gonna put it as my background, actually. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, um, and Pinky Dash will get to his own version. Um, I don't know his exact version, but he's got his own yeah, thing going on, and I'm yeah. sure he wants to talk about it. So we'll have to remind yeah, him. His one's that. pretty we'll, unique. We'll, we'll have it. to bring that up on a show when he gets back from Japan. Yep. Yeah. And there's one last thing that I want to do, and I think you know, I mean, everybody can have their own <laughs> advice. This, but I think I have, you know, general advice for this last question. Uh, and I wanted to transition it because at the very end of late customer's email, um, he put in this little comment and he said, um, to quote, uh, I don't have any actual art questions, but since a good chunk of your show's draw is personality, I figured it'd be cool to know a little bit more about you guys. First of all, thank you. That is amazing. And um, that's really awesome of you to say, um, yeah. especially because when we started the podcast, I really wanted that to be a thing. You know, we're an educational podcast, but I wanted people coming back for us, not just what we gave. You know, uh, it's 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 a good way to run a podcast is to get people to enjoy you and and not just what you're providing them, you know? Um, yeah, we basically hope that people like us and, like, that's why they keep coming back is not just because the art's amazing, but 
maybe they like hearing our voice. Ex- exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, <laughs> maybe we and this actually ties into the last day. question, which is from Flutter Tree, which is any tips for those starting a podcast but just don't know where to start? Um, first of all, have have a topic that people have something original you know it's just like art you know just do something original uh have a reason to make a podcast it's very easy for anybody to sit down and go i just want to talk for an hour and that's great and all but nobody's gonna listen to that and you know everybody wants to do that anybody can do that you know you have to be a naturally entertaining person in order to just sit down and talk for an hour so have a purpose for it you know we have our art you know that's the reason why we do it um but also, you know, have personality, you know, make mm-hmm. yourself stand out and, um, you know, you'll go far. People will appreciate it. People will come back for you and not necessarily just because of the art. And that's something we set yeah. up to do. Um, yeah. You know, Total Biscuit is, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I really love his channel and I love him and I love his personality. But in his 100 viewers special, which it wasn't really a special, he didn't really make a big deal out of it. He talked about how he tries to stay as serious as possible um, when he makes his show and make it as informative as possible. And to an extent, I do watch his like YouTube series because it is informative and I like hearing about all the indie games and stuff like that. But like, I don't come back because I care about the games. I come back because I like him and I like his personality. I like when he he gets mad at different games and like <laughs> swears in different ways in British. I find like I enjoy that and it's funny and. I enjoy hearing him talk and like I, I don't come back because of that. I come back because of him. Like I come back because strictly for him and his personality and because of his show. So like I'm I'm going there for the individual, not the content. You know what I mean? Um, and I, yeah. I, again, like I think that's kind of important in a podcast. And like we kind of try to stray, stray away from that because we try to, you know, stay educational. We try to stay really casual and make it about the art. But I don't know. I think it's awesome that like the late customer wants to like know more about us individually because it's like i don't know i've been we've been putting ourselves out there for like what 43 weeks now yeah (laughs) and it's kind of nice to get like some like just know that somebody cares you know yeah and and, you know we we all have different goals for the podcast but that was definitely something i remember talking to you guys on the first week when we were prepping all the podcast stuff we were just saying you know I, i told you guys like i want this to be a thing because you know people who give out information um are always there's good and you want that information but you if you personalize yourself people will remember your name and come back to you and so that's something i didn't want to set out just as like a hey if we do this it'll be better but like you know mm-hmm. i think that it's something that people enjoy and so that's something that we set out to do and so my favorite letters are those uh, are people sending in saying that they like our personalities and stuff because you know uh, that's what i set out to do that was my goal yeah. you know yeah um if you do want to know a little bit more about us as individuals like you can always feel free to talk to us if you like but mainly um like send in more questions to the email send us in questions about us and we're more than happy to answer them yeah so um yeah back to the the whole starting a podcast uh i mean if it's your very first podcast uh i definitely say you should have some sort of draw to it uh and personality is a great thing to have um but like if you want people to start watching you in the first place you need to have some sort of something that will interest people uh and i mean i i think like people who do like just talk podcasts like that you know just talk about random stuff uh tend to be people that are already well known or have some sort of foundation in a podcast and then kind of transition to a different podcast and they're just like you know talking about random stuff um but yeah, like for us, it's the art for like all the other shows on, on EFN. Uh, they have their own draw and their own personalities and stuff like that. So it's just yeah. about it's <laughs> being it's being original, you know, mm-hmm. but, by the way, watch watch the other shows on EFN. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the end of the questions for this week. Um, you know, I think we got through some. It's going a little bit long, but that's OK, because I, I like answering questions. We're going to try to get more questions on the show because you guys seem to really enjoy them as well. Um, so let's go into plugs then. Yep. OK, so uh, we have a DeviantArt. That's where our kind of we're kind of centralized. Uh, so that's qdartcrusaders.deviantart.com. Go there and check out the favorites folder. That's where you can see all the art from today and any extras that we could not include. And also some cool stuff, like if you watch us there, you'll get the journals for when more stuff's coming out, et cetera, et cetera. And we've also got an email, qdartcrusaders at gmail.com. 
That's where you can send us in art recommendations, questions, all that fun stuff. <laughs> um, for example, in questions, I know we're actually, because now that, <laughs> now that I'm taking control of it, I'm just pumping out as many questions as I can. Um, we are actually starting to run a bit low. We're getting, you know, some questions that we can't necessarily ask or different things like that. So just keep sending in questions. That would be really awesome. Um, and hopefully you can get on the show and, uh, make sure not to leave your real name. So how about social <laughs> yep. media stuff? We have a Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash QDR Crusaders. Uh, you can go there, give us a like, and uh, we have basically on the day of a stream, uh, we'll tell you when it's streaming. Uh, and we also have a Twitter, which is at QDR Crusade, and you can find up to the minute information on how our stream is going, et cetera, et cetera. So. Yeah, you can follow us on, on either one of those or DeviantArt, mm -hmm. and those will give you kind of a reminder the day of. So wherever you prefer to. Right. By the way, um, did we mention what's a Pokemon? No, we did not. No, we did not. Well, if you, sir, what's a Pokemon are watching this, I know what you're up to. <laughs> <laughs> this individual, what's a Pokemon, um, has commissioned two of the pieces that we featured today and has a gallery strictly dedicated to like rarity fighting a giant crab. And I'm convinced that it is his master plan to basically warp this meme of rarity and crab battle, ridged rarity fighting giant crabs. It is this man's doing. So you can always, and if you'd like to see all the rest of the crab battle pieces, um, he actually has every single one of his favorites. So I'm watching you, I'm watching you. Once <laughs> yeah, Pokemon. blame him. So if anyone wants to actually start a pony meme, just commission some people to to do something. Yeah, I'm. Conf it was it was his master plan. He's like, I'm yeah, just going to keep commissioning these crazy pieces, and it's going to become a meme, and it has. He's succeeded. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, it's a fantastic meme. So on that yeah. note, we're going to end off this podcast. Um, I do you guys know if Pinky Dash is back next week or not? Yeah, I'm no not idea. sure. I actually won't be here next week. Okay, so I think, I actually think because we had the episode of PAX, and then we had last week, and then we had this week, that's three weeks, right? Mm -hmm. Three weeks that he's gone. So I think Pinky Dash is next yes. uh, here next week, um, and Flutter Guy, you're gone. So we mm -hmm. should still have a three-man podcast. Um, if Pinky Dash isn't here, then it'll be quite the interesting show next week with just <laughs> it'll Burn be the uh, burned in rainbow plasma show yeah we're not yeah we've never had a burned in rainbow plasma show well Whoa. well we, it depends on whether or not we have guests or, or what we've got planned for next week we'll have to unschedule thank you dash <laughs> maybe so we could just have a burned in well we did plasma have a show. burned in rainbow plasma show but it was also it was burned rainbow plasma and garrett gilchrist <laughs> oh yeah so oh yeah <laughs> anyways thank you guys for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this episode uh i think it went pretty well don't you yeah yeah i liked it i enjoyed it good theme this crab week battle. i liked it yeah. crab battle <laughs> crab battle <laughs> crab battle really creative yeah all right so thank you guys we crab love battle. we love you whether or not you're watching the live stream or on youtube it's all the same to us and we love you all the same and uh without further ado my name is rainbow plasma i'm burn no one i'm flutter guy 317 and we'll see you guys next week Crap battle. Crap battle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, bye, guys. Crap battle.